Hi Matrix, today we are going to look at the second uh, region of the inner ear, which is the vestibular apparatus. We are on page 170 in your textbook. And so far we have looked at the cochlea, which is the structure that we would use for hearing. And today we are going to look at the vestibular apparatus, which is this whole upper region of the inner ear. And it's made up of the utricle and the saccule and these semicircular canals. And effectively, the vestibular apparatus is responsible for maintaining our balance and our equilibrium. So we're going to start looking at two structures which are found uh, in the vestibular apparatus, which are called the utricle and saccule. And they are these two swollen structures lower down on the vestibular apparatus. Now, they are structured very similarly uh, to the cochlea in that they also have a bony labyrinth on the outside and they have a membranous labyrinth on the inside and they're filled with fluid. Now if we were to have a closer look at the utricle and saccule, you will notice that their positions are perpendicular to one another. So the utricle and saccule are going to be responsible um, for the position of the head. Now this refers to whether or not the head is upright or whether the head is lying sideways. And so the utricle and the saccule are perpendicular to one another and the reason for that is you need to be able to sense whether or not the head is in an upright position like you were standing up or a um, lying down position where you are vertical. And that's why then that the utricle is at a horizontal position and the saccule is located in a vertical position. Now by having two of these structures positioned in different um, dimensions, one in horizontal and one in vertical, it'll allow you to sense the position of the head slightly differently. So the utriculus, which if you look at the second diagram, senses our horizontal movement, whereas our sacculus is going to sense any kind of vertical movement. In other words, the utriculus is going to sense a forward and backwards and sideways movement, whereas our sacculus is going to sense forward and backwards with a up and down. And you would need to be able to sense the position of the head when you are lying down as opposed to when you are standing up. Now we call this ability to sense the position of the head dynamic, excuse me, sorry, static equilibrium. Now static equilibrium is closely linked to the posture of the body and in order to sense this posture we need a receptor structure. Now in order to receive stimulus around the posture of the body, we are going to use a structure called the macula. And there is a macula in both the utricle and the saccule. So now let's have a closer look at exactly what the macula is and how it works. And so in this diagram, what we have here is they have cut open the utriculus and the saccula, so you can see on the inside. And now if we take a closer look at what a macula actually looks like, you will notice that it has some um, nerves and these nerves end in hair cells. Now the hair cells are what we use in order to be stimulated so that we can create the movement of the head into a electrical impulse. Now what actually stimulates them is these tiny little stone-like structures called otoliths. And otoliths are uh, magnetic and they are sensitive to the Earth's gravitational pull. And so they will be pulled down towards uh, gravity no matter which way the head is facing. And so whichever direction they're pulled down to, they will start to stimulate these hair cells. And that's how the head knows which way is up or down. And so in this picture here, somebody is looking ahead of them, and that then means that in this particular macula, the otoliths are sitting 
in their, let's call it, resting or original position. And so they'll sink straight down to uh, the bottom and telling the brain that the head is upright. However, if you were to lean forward, like in the second picture, all of the otoliths start to slosh forward and slide forward, and they start to stimulate and bend more of the hair cells to the one side. And so there's a greater stimulus on the one side of the macula because all the otoliths are being pulled to that side because of the gravitational force. And that's how the head and the brain registers that you're now leaning forward. So all these little otoliths are moving forward because the gravitational pull is greater in the front of the head, and so they're attracted to that. Now, something that would affect all these otoliths would be, for example, if you were sitting in a chair that can spin around, and if you've ever spun around in a chair before and you stop very quickly, you have this sort of dizzy vertigo sensation. Without even standing up, you feel dizzy. And your position of your head has not changed, but you have spun yourself around so much that all the otoliths have evenly distributed themselves now in the macula. And they're now stimulating the entire uh, section of hair cells and so the body needs to sit still for a little while and allow the otoliths to sink back down to where they belong so that you don't have any sense of imbalance or vertigo. Now something that you would also be stimulating if you were um, moving around and swirling in a chair over and over again would be the semicircular canals and you have three of them and the reason for having three is you need to be able to um, sense balance in three dimensions, which means you need to be able to sense um, going forwards and backwards, up and down, and then left and right. So if the utricles and saccules are there for static equilibrium, then these semicircular canals are there for what we call dynamic equilibrium, or speed and direction of the head. So the semicircular canals are responsible for identifying the speed in the direction in which the head and body is moving. And to do that at the base of each of these um, canals is a sensory region called the ampulla. It's this little swollen region and there are three in this picture here. And this is where we find a structure called the crista. So effectively, the crista is our receptor. So because you have uh, these crista as your receptors, you're going to need one for each of the three canals so that you'll be able to sense whether or not the head is moving backwards and forwards and left and right. Now, if we take a closer look on the inside of one of the semicircular circular canals, let's have a look at what it would look like at rest. Now, at rest, let's just keep in mind that if we look at this diagram at the bottom here, this is one semicircular circular canal. Remember, it is also an extension of the bony and membranous labyrinth. It has a bony layer on the outside, which is filled with a membrane and a liquid lymph layer. And if we were then to describe what actually happens um, when we move around and how do we stimulate these semicircular canals, well, we need to look very closely at the swollen um, region at the bottom, which is called the ampulla. Now, sitting inside the ampulla, if we look very closely, is this entire structure here, which we call the crista. And the crista has a few smaller components to it. It has these hair cells, which are attached to a nerve. And these hair cells are embedded in something called a capula, which is like a gel-like cap that sits and it is suspended in um, endolymph, which is what would be filling this purple region sitting around it. 
And effectively what happens is as the head moves and changes in speed and direction, the fluid inside the semicircular canal will start to move. And so what will happen is it will cause the capula to bend, which is the gel or the jelly-like um, cap on the top. And as it bends over, it stimulates the hair cells. And that whole structure then creates an impulse that is sent to the brain. Now you have three of these, which means that you can move all three at the same time. It just depends on the direction in which the body is moving. For example, if you've ever been on a roller coaster before, you would be stimulating all three of these semicircular canals um, and you would be able to sense how your body is moving at different speeds and in different directions. And it's exactly how your body maintains its balance while you are running and you change direction very quickly. It is your semicircular canals that allow you to um, sense the change in direction and not lose your balance. Now, if we were to look at everything as a whole package, we can see in this final picture that the utricles and the saccules contain macula, and those macula are responsible for the standing um, position of the head, so the posture of the head. And it does that with these little otoliths, those little um, stones in your ears that are magnetically sensitive and are attracted to gravity, and they will move down towards gravity. And remember, they can move around and they can go left and right, which means wherever they accumulate will tell the hair cells which sit in the macula, um, whether or not the head is leaning forward, is it leaning back, are you lying down, or are you upside down? Working alongside that to maintain the balance of the body is our semicircular canals, and they have our ampulla, which is just the swollen region that houses the receptacle, the crista. And if we zoom in again on that crista, we have our hair cells, and they have the capula or cupula made out of a gel, and that is stimulated and bent either to the left or the right, depending on whether or not the endolymph is going to flow to the left, to the right, forwards or backwards, because of course it's in three dimension, and so that's why we have three of them. Now, all of these structures have to work together in order to maintain your balance and your posture. If you were, for example, to be on a boat and experience something like motion sickness, the reason for that is the information that's being received from the ears does not match the information that is being received from the eye as well. And often the reason for that is your eyes are looking at something stationary, but the body can sense that you are moving. And so that would be something like your semicircular canals can sense the speed of um, the boat that you are on. And it's the same thing that happens in a car. Um, and what will happen is those little um, crista will be bending over and they will be moving because you are feeling the force of the boat moving However, you are still and your head is still and that also confuses your eyes because your eyes are seeing stationary objects and so that information conflicts and it can often lead to motion sickness. Um, however, looking out onto the horizon can help with motion sickness because you are seeing the boat move in your peripheral vision and then that allows your eyes to um, identify that yes we are moving we are um, standing still but the object we are on is moving and that doesn't conflict with the ear information and so you don't feel ill um, this video and its purpose was to simply introduce you to all of the structures the final video in this series is then going to explain exactly how you are going to articulate yourself in exams and tests when referring to how we hear and how do we explain balance and equilibrium.